Welcome everyone, it's uh, Aussie Tech Heads episode 657. How you all doing? It's the 14th 11th 2019. Uh, yes, how are these fires? I hope everyone's staying safe and out of all this, all the fires and everything. They've been sort of threatening uh, most part of New South Wales and Queensland. I think New South Wales, are some majority of them are starting to die down, but up in Queensland, I think they're just starting to, you know, to get going again. So uh, if you get the order, to get the knock on the door, please do as they say and get out of there. Uh, this week, we are brought to you by ATHwebhosting.com.au. Our servers are operating on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration and more. And uh, start new company, register your company, your PTY LTD, with ASIC Online, Australia's easiest and fastest online company registration site, all constitution, company certificate and other documents are available for download immediately after registration. ABN and registered office services are also available and Aussie Byte clock faces. If you get to the checkout and and uh, chuck in ATH19, get 33% off Jace's Aussie Byte clock faces in the Fitbit app gallery. Now this week on the show we've got a couple of a couple of stories to get through. Things like uh, Apple Worker is texting himself other people's photos, uh, slow websites and what's going to happen to those in the near future. And also Samsung TVs are disabling some apps. We'll find out what app, or one app in particular, we'll find out what that will be uh, later on. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds or youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds or where you have found us right now, uh, probably on iTunes or somewhere like that, some podcatcher somewhere in the internet. <laughs> All right, let's uh, see who, who we're going to chat to this week. It's Joe. Hello, Joe. Hey, Glenn. How are you going? Good, thanks. What's been going on with you? Oh, mate, I've been busy this week trying to work out a few things, um, playing with my Internet of Things, the Samsung Smart Things, and uh, I've been playing around the computers and so forth. So, yeah, the usual things. Yeah, nice stuff. I see uh, just looking there behind you, it's a bit tidier than behind me, but uh, you've got a bit of a, yeah, amassing some gadgetry there. I hope they're all been opened and tested. Yes, they, they've all been opened and tested and um, I'm actually going to fix up that back wall soon and put some shelving and uh, sort of put things on the wall, you know, a bit much like you see these people on YouTube. Because I plan yeah. on doing a bit more YouTube work eventually. Right. Apparently, I saw a there was a YouTube fight. Did you hear about that? Like two. No, no please tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't. I didn't bring up the whole story, but I was just reading it as I was uh, prepping for today. There was back in August. There were two. What I can gather, just two YouTubers they had about forty million people followers each, or something. And for some reason, they had some amateur fighting in the history in their history. So they decided to get together and punch each other up. And uh, it was it ended in a draw, and so I think, and then they had a rematch, and it was just I think it was just like last week again. So I'm not sure who won, but yeah, if you go to Google, just type YouTube fight, I'm sure you'll find it. it's crazy. Oh, that sounds interesting. I have to have a look at that later. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so and talking about fights, there's another fight this week, isn't there? On Friday, if you're listening to us before Friday, is the uh, Gallon and Barry Hall fight. I don't know if you're into that one, Joe. Uh, which one? Uh, P- Paul Gallon and Barry Hall. You heard of that um, one? No, that's the rugby league, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I'm not into that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, just because it's rugby league? I still watch two well, people no, bashing each other up. I don't follow the rugby league up. at all. Yeah, but you still want to see people get bashed up. <laughs> Doesn't interest me, sorry. Right. I think it's good. <laughs> I might even I think I might go down to the pub or somewhere to see if I can watch that somewhere. I reckon it'll be good. We'll see, because I'm going for Gallant because he's a sharky, ex sharky now, of course unfortunately. You would, yes, of course. Yeah, so I'll be going for uh for a gal, but uh, so hopefully I've I've got a smile on me dial next time uh you see me. Um yeah, so where were we going? That nowhere at the moment, I don't think. All right, let's start with uh yeah this apple store worker over in california uh let me get a uh for people on the video look i'll, I'll get a uh the copy of the story up if i can or maybe i can't okay so while you're doing that i just uh, wanted to tell our listeners i hope that i sound a lot better this week uh, glenn's been doing a bit of tweaking with his settings so hopefully i sound a lot better this week yes yeah, so it, everything in testing Joe sounds heaps better, so do I. So let's hopefully that <laughs> yes, because yeah, I think I, as I replied to one of the guys on YouTube once when the audio sounded now this is what really gets you going. The audio sounded great in GarageBand. You play it on the PC, 
not too bad. I could hear the, you know, I could hear the, the problem. But then on YouTube, it was just very much uh, exacerbated. I don't know why. Uh, so maybe it's just one of those things. Maybe, like, there's some sort of, uh, I don't know, m- mixer or something on my machine that I, when I listen to it, it hides the distortion or something. I don't really know, but it's all... Uh, it's all stock standard, but anyway, uh, everyone sounds good. I've downloaded another uh, uh, VU meter, so we're all punching good level. So let's hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we're all good this week. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, Apple store work at text himself customer's intimate photo. So this is no good. Uh, you know, when you take your uh, phone in to get fixed, no matter where it is, really, you know, if it's uh, Apple or you know the bloke down the street, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't expect them to be, you know finding f- compromising photos of you and and tes- texting them to themselves. But uh, anyway, that's apparently what's happened. So this lady, uh, Gloria, she bought her phone into the Apple store in California after removing some personal data. She alleged uh, via Facebook that an employee had found this photo of her and sent it to himself. Apple said that they investigated and the worker is no longer with the company, as you would expect. Uh, it wouldn't be hard to find you know find that out would it so yeah e- easy one for them easy one for the police there she said she had an she had made an effort to remove personal information such as financial data from the iphone uh before taking the device in she was oh, I'll, I'll quote this instead of uh doing it that way uh, she yes said i was going to delete all the pictures from my phone too but forgot because they were they were texting me that they moved my appointment time up so i was trying to rush over there it was only when she got home she returned, she realised that her phone had been used to send a text to an unfamiliar number. She's put two and two together. Uh, Apple said, yep, they've, they've sorted that guy out. They've fired him. Uh, no longer with the company. And she goes on the Facebook, that continues on and says she will press charges against the former employee. So, look, I, I think, uh, I don't know, like as a, as a bit of a... Something you just don't think of, isn't it? Like I know you don't expect st- your stuff to be texted around, but I remember oh, ten years ago there was an issue somewhere in a in a computer repair shop down there in Sydney, somewhere Joe that uh, that someone was upset that they discovered that the person fixing their computer had copied all of their data onto his machine or onto their machine at the workshop. Now you know initially you 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 know your first instincts are going that's no good, but then well, sometimes you got to do that. That's don't right. You, ben? I mean if- yes. Because, you know, I've done that a couple of times, but, you know, I guess you would ask their permission. You'd say, hey, listen, I've got to keep your data on another machine so that when I go to fix your machine, if something goes wrong with it, when you don't lose your data, Mm. you normally would tell the customer that. I mean, I've done it a few times. Yeah, well, that's right. And, you know, like, so I've kept, I normally, I'd put a, uh, you know, like one or two drives aside just specifically for that purpose. And, And I just... You know, if, if people ask, it's like I'll fix your computer, and then uh, about two weeks, as I I normally did it like a two week. You know, if it breaks again within two weeks, bring it back to me. Then after two weeks, then I'd normally I'd, I'd you know be fixing another computer. I'd see that that, that the folder with their stuff in, I just delete it. So it had like about a two week life. But uh, I suppose it, there's unscrupulous people everywhere, isn't there? And you know, if if you take your computer to someone that's uh, you know, going, hee, 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 when you're talking to them, you probably shouldn't leave it with them. But, uh, you know, you just got to have your gut yeah, feeling. A couple of things I've done in the past is I've, I've uh, grabbed a USB stick and, uh, I mean, depending on how much data is on it, obviously, and um, copied it onto the USB stick and uh, given it back to them because a, a lot of the times they really appreciate that, that you're giving it back to them on a USB or on a DVD. Again, depending mm. on how much data it is. Yep. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're fixing a computer and you might see a couple of gigs worth of photos in there and you think, okay, well, these are family photos. I think you'd appreciate it if I put them onto a USB uh, stick or maybe a, a DVD disc and, and give it back to them so that they can keep it for themselves. I mean, you know, nine times out of ten, the people who bring computers to you to get fixed, they don't really do that sort of thing to back up their, their own photos. No, nobody backs up. And that's another thing because uh – well, just a shout out as well while we're talking about this. A shout out to Tim from a uh, uh, computer company here in Burley Heads. He got knocked off over the weekend, uh, or through the week, just the other night, and he sent me the videos of it, and you know, like from his cameras and that. And geez, like uh, he was he was hiding all the his laptops every day. He put them away in a in a certain space, and you know, it was outside the office even in, into the next office, and they just. Obviously, they were just after laptops. They they just went through his office, couldn't find any laptops, then knocked down the door to the other office, uh, 
they still couldn't find the laptops, but there was a there was a cabinet they couldn't open. They took the whole cabinet, and it was just all on the video. And I tell you, like, you know, now he's got the really difficult task of saying to his clients, "I haven't got your computer anymore." Now, if they haven't back if they That's haven't backed their data really up, hate to do that. Oh my god! If they haven't backed their data up. Well, that's it. They're gone. So that's just another reason why you need to back up your stuff. Well, you that's know? right. And even if you're in your own home and you have some home, in home invasion, invader and, you know, goes into your home when you're not home, you're at shopping or whatever and sees a laptop on the, on the desk and says, oh, I have that. And, uh, oh, there's mm. a, a portable hard drive. I have that as well. And um, most people don't think of things like that. But, you know, it's it, it's a good idea to always back up to the cloud for one. And the second thing is to make a second backup off-site. Mm. And I think as well, if you do if you do go into your computer shop with your broken computer or hard drive, just ask for the broken hard drive back because, you know, you don't know what these guys do with the, the old hard drive. They might just throw it in the bin. It ends up down the tip. Someone could come along, pick it up, plug it in or try and fix it. Or, you know, it's unlikely. Yeah, yeah, I good know. point. I mean, a lot of people just uh, – I've seen it on eBay as well, you know, 10, 15 hard drives not working. How much, you know mm. – 30 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever it is. Mm. So, like, yeah, that's right. And I think, yeah, you just got to do it. Then the, the, I reckon the best way is, is is get one, just open them up and get the platters out. That's what I did to some of them. And I, I, I just, I don't know, I use that as a, a, a play thing when I'm, you know, <laughs> going, going while well, they've got nothing to do. Uh, I've, never, I've never put a hard drive apart yet. No, oh, it's, uh, it's not the easiest thing. You need special screwdrivers you do things. you need special torex tools or something special torex to mm. um, screwdrivers yeah so like i know who i know whose hard drive whose data is on that platter but i don't think you'd ever get it off again look at all the finger marks all over it <laughs> you're, like, you're never going to reconstruct that baby but um but yeah but that's another thing you just back up your data get your your, your hard drive back because look that people will sell the old hard drives that don't work and mainly because uh, most of the time, or some of the time, what goes wrong with the hard drives is the circuitry. And so if you can find another hard drive with the exact same circuit board on it, we can swap them over and the, and the hard drive will spin back up again. And that, that's how a lot of the these hard drive fixing places operate. You know, they've got thousands of models of hard drives and they just go, oh, okay, you bring yours and they go, oh, model ABC, let's put another circuit board on, spins up, great. Uh, that'll be 500, thanks. Or they'll go the 20 grand way <laughs> and, you know, actually yeah, get down to platter level. But anyway, well, actually, that used to be the way that they used to do it. Um, it's a bit more involved now when it comes to Windows 10. I think right. even Windows 7 to a certain extent. Um, Windows 10 and Windows 7 put a certain file uh, which is embedded in the chip. That's if you, I'm talking about this is if you're, you're getting like a manufacturer from Dell or Hewlett Packard or something like that. Mm. Uh, that's embedded within the the actual chip on the uh, on the on the board of the uh, the hard drive, and that talks to it for somehow. Right. Um, Sometimes just changing the board itself is not enough. You've got to also change that chip, which um, if it's a very delicate process. Right. But I do know that sometimes even just changing the board is, is not going to do it. Because I know I ran into a problem with BitLocker, and that was pretty hard to get the data out. Uh, you, well, I, I, well, I couldn't work it out. I had to find the code, and luckily I was able to find the code. But if you can um, – I'm not sure that's on all versions of Windows 10. It might just be the Pro version. But, you know – Look, if you've got sensitive data, you guys, you probably know what to do with it already anyway. So, yeah. But that's just a, yeah, I don't know, just something to, to think about, isn't it? As next time you take your computer or your phone somewhere. Um, hmm. Because I, I wouldn't think twice about taking it to Apple. You, or, you know, you just go and say, yeah, it's my phone broken. Give me a new one, fix it. And that's, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, well, you, you, you know, you, you assume that everything's going to be okay. And, and it should be. And, and you know, just for a few bad apples, it gives the rest of the industry a bad name. If anyone's seen any nude shots of me on the internet, can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe that might be a bad thing. Oh, Glenn, yeah, there's a nude shot of you on this page. I go, what the hell are you doing looking at that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, look, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, slow websites are uh, soon to be labelled by Chrome. So this is very interesting. So we all know that Google 
is uh, the king of everything, the king of content, the king of search, king of everything. Uh, and if Google, if Chrome is starting to label uh, uh, sites, websites for their speed or rank them for speed or badging them for their speed, then you know that, yes, this sort of proves that uh, speed of your site definitely does contribute to a higher SEO ranking. So Google said it was working on a, on several speed badging systems that let visitors know why a page is taking a long time to show up. Now, if you've got a slow page, you, you can have a look at it. You get one of those waterfall tests. I think a good page to go to is GTM or GTmetrics.com, I think. Uh, and it'll show you. Most of the time, it's like, you know, it's, it's waiting for the Google the, the, the Google stuff to load. You know, if you've got Google Ads on there or you've got Google um, Tag Manager Analytics, sometimes, it, yeah, your site just pauses while all this stuff has to load. Google Fonts. Uh, but anyway, Google's Chrome browser is used by 64% of the people who go online. Uh, Google's plan apparently was criticised by the Hacker News website, which is largely used, surprisingly, by professional developers. Uh, so now I'll tell you why they are do- why they are uh, not happy with it in a second because I want to grab for you guys on the video. I just want to grab you that story so I can show you. Uh, doesn't the um, site itself depend though on the server it's sitting on? Like, uh, if the server itself is slow, would that in 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 turn cause the site to load slow? I mean, I know that there's certain add-ons and stuff that people put on websites that cause it to run slower. Mm. But doesn't it also depend on the server that it's running? I mean, I know I never have a problem with the Aussie Tech Head one. It yes, always run really good. good. That's excellent to hear. But yes, you're right. Uh, if it's uh, yeah, the, the server does uh, yeah contribute. Yes, because if the servers like so the ATH servers like they're shared hosting service which means that you you have to share the the actual the whole server with other sites so if you've got another site another site on there that's not playing nice you know maybe they've been infected or something and uh they're taking using all the cpu using all the the memory and all that just using all the the resource of that server for itself then your site doesn't have enough resources to display what it has to do and so yes your site will be slow uh yeah uh, look location in the world could be a factor but I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think you're going to get badged, you know, slow after one load of slowness, so to speak. But I think uh, probably, you know, over time, if you're notoriously slow, uh, then it, 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 you might get the slow badge. But anyway, um, but yeah, you're right, Joe. You, you want to be – look, apparently you, I've heard stats, things like uh, Walmart, I think it was, over uh, there in the US, uh, they – I think they they increased their retention rate of people on the site or increased some stat maybe uh, I can't remember now the exact what it was but they increased they will call it the retention rate something like uh, by about two percent for every second that they got the the site to load faster so it works good for your your um your your, your customers and your sales and it also works good for for google because google wants everyone to have a fast site but yeah so the hacker people what are they doing then they weren't happy some question how easy it would be to identify what causes pages to be slow well that's the whole point well we want to know what what it is uh one comment commenter said that the warnings would be seen as a badge of shame well i guess they would be but you know what happens when you get shamed we're going to fix it and that benefits everyone, doesn't it? So on it, you know that's that's fair enough. You, you know if you got a, if you've got a slow site, you've been labelled a slow. We'll fix it and yeah, sh- shame you into speed. Does it does it tell you like um, does it like have like a pop up or something that comes up on the screen? How does how does a, the user know, or does it just go sent to the um, to the owner of the site? No, I think it's it's going to be displayed publicly. Uh, they haven't decided how it's going to go. Uh, as yet, I'd say maybe something like you know the uh, secure notification up in the URL bar. Uh, if you're not on a site that's got an SSL certificate, uh, Google Chrome will print not secure. Yeah, so yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like a broken padlock or anything. It's quite, it's it's obvious, not secure. <laughs> so yeah. so maybe you know maybe on the other other end of the URL bar, they might. 
put a little badge, like a little icon or something to say, you know, maybe a, a I don't know, a red for slow or and green for fast. I don't know. Or should that be the other way around? I don't know. Yeah, I remember Google was saying that they're also starting to mark sites that aren't secure as well. They're low priority sites at the if I remember right. That- yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Well, for SEO reasons, uh, yeah, if you haven't got an SSL, that's just another factor that will uh, rank your site lower. Uh, so if you've got an SSL, you want all you want all the you want all the help you can get. So you, you do the SSLs, you get paid SSL over free SSL, uh, all these things. You know, um, you get as good as you can with uh, speed wise. You do your GTM or G, yeah GT metric speed test. Google it. I'm not sure. I'll get you the right one. Hang on. I'll get you the right one, guys. So everyone, because I know, say you don't get some scam site. I think it's gtmetrics.com. Let's have a look. Yeah, gtmetric dot with an X at the end. Yes, so gtmetrics. That's right, M-E-T-R-I-X dot com. And then what will happen is you'll be able to see things like how fast your site is. It'll give you hints like these here. Uh, it'll say what what is slowing your site down or some possible improvements. So you can go through those, fix them up, and then, you know, these things will increase. Your, your page load time, I think you should be probably trying to get optimally, and this is uh, maybe sometimes unreachable, but optimally under three seconds for your homepage to load. Um, maybe if you're going three to five, five seconds is getting a bit long. Uh, but yeah, you want to be close to three seconds. Uh, and what else they got here? Your page size. So that's another contributing factor there. I don't know why these dots are all over the page. But anyway, oh, page load. That must be hot spots. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so your page load size. So you know, if you, if it's if your page has got five photos, at one meg each. Yeah, it's never going to load. So anyway, so you, you know what to do. Then you get these. Uh, where's the waterfall? Where can I show you the waterfall? I don't know. There's a waterfall there. You can see. I can't see. There's yeah, apparently the servers for this particular site are in um, Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, but if you if you sign in, if you create an account and sign in, you're able to change that to Sydney. So you can I see. Yep, okay. So you'll be able to test from local. That's right. Um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah. So the hacker, these hacker guys, uh, said, "Well, what is fast?" They will ask the questions. Uh, what is fast depends on how the browser passes websites. So one website can be faster in Firefox but slower in Chrome. Does that still get a badge of shame? Uh, Google being Google, I think it's all about Chrome. There's nothing. Is there? Does anything else exist? I don't know. I don't think so. Not as far as they're concerned anyway. But, yeah, so that, that's that's the thing. We're giving a bit of uh, SEO uh, info tonight. It's good. That's pretty good, actually. I actually put my son on there and, and just did a test and, and it worked out pretty good. 84%. It's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. So so how what's how what's how big's your site? What's the size of it? Um I think it's got four or five pages. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, so as long as you get the So it's not a one page site. Yeah, I think it's only just testing the home page or the page that you put in. Oh, okay. So, so you want your first page to come up the far? Well, you can do it on all pages. You know, you want to optimize all pages essentially, I guess. But you start at your home page. That's where people are going to land, and yeah, and just you go through the list of possible fixes and fix them up. You know, some things are easy, like uh, you know, there, there's an image that might not be optimized. So you know, I don't know. You well, th- the thing that's slowing mine down a bit is apparently it's some uh, combined images using CSS scripts. Right. Okay. So then, right, so that, that's that's sliding my site down a bit, and that's only because I got a, a, somebody to create the images for my site on on some of the images. So um, if I could do that better, it'll be, it'll get a uh, a better. Uh, that's right. Better it'll go rating. faster. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go, it'll load faster. The images are smaller, and it'll just load quicker. And that's that's the name of the game. But uh, yeah, so that's that one. Now, what did you have, Joe, this week? You had a uh, some social yeah, look, media I, stuff. I was, I was listening to. Um, uh, Lon TV. He's a, a a YouTube guy, he's and he good. was talking about. Yeah, he's good. Lon um, mm. I, I, I love listening to his um, his podcast, uh, his uh, YouTube channel. It's really good. And in there, um, he, he was talking about the disclosure for uh, social media influencers um, and the new laws that are uh, available now in America. Um, with regards to the social media influencers and what they should do and what they shouldn't do. 
yeah, that's it. That's that's the Lime Dot TV. I love listening to that guy. He's really cool. Mm. He, he's got, I used to. I was watching him a little while ago and just learning uh, tips and tricks about his hardware, his video hardware, his sound hardware, and trying to fix our audio problems. <laughs> it's um yeah. He he buys and tests a lot of uh, equipment. He's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry, Joe. That's okay. Now, um, apparently the. Um, this works with uh, people who work with brands or who endorse products. And if you do, then there's certain uh, laws that are making recommendations that you need to do if you're you know, going via social media um, when it comes to relationship or the material or, uh, connection with the brand or uh, if it's something that comes to personal family or an employment relationship with a brand or if you have some sort of financial connection with the brand. Um such as the brand paying you to uh, give a, a free or a discounted products or services. Um, you know, if you're telling your followers about these kinds of relationships, it's important because it helps to keep the recommendations honest and truthful mm. and it allows people to weigh the value of your endorsement. So this is surprising. I can't get that side up for some oh, – it's a PDF. That's why I can't uh, get It's a up. PDF, yeah, the one I link I sent you. Yeah, so – yeah, that's uh, that's interesting because this is so. This is from the FTC.gov. So this is actual the rules in America. Yeah, that's right. And they talk about things like when you're supposed to disclose. You're supposed to disclose when you have a um, any financial, employment, uh, personal, or family relationship with a brand. Um, the f- financial relationships aren't limited to just the money. But also the relationship got into to do with the value. If you mention a product, yeah, right. like you know. Um, if you have a brand that gives you free or discounted products or you get some sort of perks from it, you're supposed to mention the name of the product and the brand. It's, um, you know, you don't assume that people already know that you have that brand or you have some sort of relationship. You have to make the disc- um, disclosures, even if you think that um, uh, you're being unbiased towards it. Mm. Look, I haven't, I haven't uh, gone through the that whole thing, but... I'd say just my, my first question there would be, I'd say one of your dot points there you've, you've pulled out there is as an influencer, it's your responsibility to make these disclosures. So my first question there, to be, not not to you, Joe, but you know to yep. the world would be yep. Yep. Uh, who defines or who says who an influencer is and who's not? Like is a, do you have to are you an influencer only if that's how you make your living or, or how do you become known? How are you an influencer? Well, you have to uh, you have to disclose um, when you have any financial employment or personal or family relationship with a particular brand. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, let's say in your case, um, uh, or Glenn, that you you're using um, the Aussie Tech Heads, um, the uh, the website there that does the um, the hosting, right? Mm. You should you should mention that um, that's part of part of the brand, right, right. But but you can't, I suppose. Um, but but they're, they're not probably the, the rules aren't probably designed to go after just everyone. Well, I suppose they are. No, if someone no, gets no. Annoyed it's it's, it. uh, it's it's just a general for America at the moment. It's just only just come out the last month, hmm. and it says uh, you should disclose um, um, in such a way that. People can see and understand the disclosure. Right. So, how do you um, how do you, how do you disclose? How do you disclose? Um, simple explanations like uh, the brand name is a free product, or it could often be placed in a way that is hard to miss. Um, you can say that it's, it's um, uh, what else does it say here? How do you disclose? So, I think like I think you've seen like. In Twitter, like I'm not a big Twitter follower, but I, even I've seen in Twitter uh, someone will say uh, start off by saying sponsored link or or um, and even Google's going down that path too. Just, <laughs> it's with the you know just when you tag links in your website, uh, you can tag them su- supported or sponsor, and Google won't follow them or something won't juice them up. But anyway, um, but yeah, so I, I, on Twitter I've seen it happen. You know, and you, yeah. and you know, yeah. So it's, it's happening out there. And also with with that Lon TV, he says in only all his videos, uh, this is full disclosure. The product that I'm revealing is um, given to me by the company, um, free of charge. Um, so um, to review the product, but all the uh, reviews that I'm making 
uh, been, have not been monitored or have not been uh, checked or adjusted in any way by the person that's given me the product. They're all his own assumptions and all, all his own thoughts on, 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 the, on the product. Mm. And, and he's given full disclosure that he's been given this product, but the thoughts of, of him on this product are all his and he's not been influenced by anybody else other than himself. And that's the point they're trying to make here. Yeah, I think I'm thinking back to oh, a long time ago when I was listening to Leo on the Twit Network, and I'm, I'm, I dare say it's probably still his, uh, still his his guide or his rule. But I'm pretty sure that he will only review something he's actually bought, so not that no one's actually given it to him. He's actually bought it because then he can go good, bad, or indifferent. Because you know, if someone's given you something to review, it sort of makes it a bit hard to 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 rubbish it do you think well that's true but at the same time um you can give your honest opinion now, like if say for example uh sony gives me a, a television and say hey joe um i want you to review this for me um but if you if you can give us a good plug i'll, I'll you know i'll give you uh the, I'll let you keep the tv or something <laughs> well see that's against the rules and that's against the um the the things of um what they're trying to say here they're trying mm. to say here don't don't go for that sort of thing. Mm. Well, I'd hold off on that. I'd say, <laughs> I'd say, look, wait till I review. It. And if I reviewed, it, I went, oh, I love this TV, and I'm going to give it a great review just because I I really love it. And they say keep. It. I go, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> but if I if well, I that's had to right. ba- yeah, you can do it that way. Yeah. If I had to bag it, I go, nah, okay, take it back. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Which I think which I think is a good thing because I mean I don't know about you, but I myself sometimes. I'm looking at a product and I do go online and I do look at YouTube and I do look at forums and whatever else. That's right. And I, I do see, because, it, you know, you can't not know everything about the product or about its service or how mm. good it is. And this, I mean, people at the shops at some point as well, they have a, some sort of uh, liability of disclosure as well if they've got a genuine interest into it. I mean, we all think that they have some sort of commission based on their sales, but they don't ever say it, and this is something that they're saying that you have to disclose. I'm getting a commission on this, but I do think this is a good product. Well, that was sort of happened. That was a big blow up quite some time ago. Now down there in Sydney with the the cash for comment with the radios, wasn't That's it? That's right. Yes. Yeah, with I think uh, Alan Jones was it, and John Laws. They were all involved, and it was something about uh, you know they they were recommending I think a bank. Or something, just in like a in an editorial sort of way, without mentioning that they were actually getting paid to do that sort of stuff. Yes, yeah, uh, I remember something about that. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, so look, it's, this is not a new thing. It's probably just new new rules for the new technology, but the 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 same premise, like I suppose, is uh, brought over from the old days. Uh, so yeah, so how so how to disclose and and. How should you disclose? Like uh, it says here, simple language um, and explanations like thanks to whatever brand for the free product. Uh, Yeah, so, yeah, I guess as long as it's clear that uh, you're reviewing it, yeah, and you're getting paid to do it or whatever, that's fine. Um, And what else should we know? Uh, You can't talk about your experience with a product you haven't tried. If you're well, paid, there you go. Eh? Yeah, if you're paid, so this is this is this is pretty good. I mean, you can't sort of. I mean, I, I get that. Hmm. You know, you, unless you, you know, you, you, unless somebody sends you, say, for example, a microphone or sends you a, a some sort of an amplifier, it, it could be anything. You really shouldn't be able to um, talk about or give some sort of review on something you haven't actually tried. Look, I jumped on. I was on the Facebook today, and I was nearly going to buy something because I thought oh, I was twenty bucks and. Uh, I, I think I got a phone call and I never got back to it. But look, you know, like I, I was on the Facebook the other day looking at something, and Jordan's been sending me, uh, you know, uh, products that you click on and they go to some shop and you just don't know if it's true or not. But especially on Facebook, you click there and you see the product. There's no uh, price or anything, and just all, all the comments underneath are just all glowing. You know, this is great. I got it in five days. This is beautiful. This is cheap. You know, you go, are all these fair income? And, you know, and look, sometimes I think that these rules are probably good, you know, because you want to know. You don't want to be ripped off. And there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there, and I think this is a good thing. You know? Yes, that's right. Exactly right. And especially when you're talking about the, um, the health industry, uh, when people are telling you about this particular 
Waarom men does this and this particular uh, Waarom men does that And they don't have any scientific proof to back it up mm. You know, it's just like You know, well, that's what they say But they've got nothing to back it up So Yeah, it's um, good and, 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 and some people are making, you know, hundreds of thousands If not millions of dollars um, Promoting these products But they have no scientific proof Or any other sort of um, Proof that, that that does what it's meant to do, mm. and I mean, like I said, this is just something that's happening in America at the moment. And um, but I, I see this particular laws taking place all over the world. Actually, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think it's good. You, 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 if you're going to put reviews up, like you know, eBay had issues with reviews, didn't they? Because they were doing uh, the star reviews, and then all of a sudden, didn't they stop? Doing that, or they didn't allow negative reviews or something at some stage. I heard something vaguely about that negative reviews, yeah. Yeah, and you think, what? You know, and even like I suppose even with the Facebook and Twitters and Instagram, how they're all removing likes and everything. Well, if you've got a product or it's a commercial post or something, and yeah, you know, that's that could help you. Know, if you're a fair income and you, you don't want to, you want to, you know, you know, bellow from the rooftops how good you are and how many likes you've got. But uh, look, That's right. yeah. I mean, how many times have you been on a, on a, on a say like an Amazon or like a, a an eBay, and you've noticed reviews there that are it, it really looks like somebody's been mm. paid to put them there. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're the sort of things that's trying to stop as well. I mean, sometimes two or three comments are the same with two different, three different names, and it's like, mm, okay, this is not not good. Well, I had a uh, experience where uh, you know you get rang up by these uh, people that want to sell you like betting programs or betting software. And so the one that this guy was talking to me about, like logically it worked, right? I'm thinking, okay, well, logically it works. Uh, why hasn't this, why isn't everyone doing it? You know, all these questions sort of go through your mind yep, where, yep. where what it was all about, say there was two, that what the system did was uh, it would only bet on A or B games. So it wouldn't bet on like say a horse race. Okay. Because there's so many variables it would only bet on, this versus this, so two a rugby league game or tennis um, or something like that. So what it did was it would look up the odds. The computer would go around the world and look at the odds of all the the bookmakers or all these sites and see what the odds were for for this team versus that team uh, for each team, and then it would calculate how much you needed to place on both teams for a win to make money. Like, and logically, it works, but I tell, but that's getting off the track. But what I was going to tell you about these these uh, these reviews and everything was so you know like the thing was like the software was eighteen grand. I was never going to buy it, but I was going through their site, and uh, so I was going through and I thought, oh, video testimonials, okay, you know they're pretty good. You know they're hard to come by and they're they're good. So so I, I jumped in the video testimonial and looked and went, oh yeah, okay, well these two are obviously having fun with it. So yeah, interesting. But then I thought, you know what, I've seen that woman somewhere before, and I thought, where have I seen? I'm sure I've seen that lady somewhere before. Do I know her or what's going on? I've seen that woman somewhere before. And then it just was rolling around my brain for a couple of days and I went, I got it. And it was on Fiverr. I was on Fiverr about a month previous looking up different things and there she was offering video testimonials. Well, there you go. Eh? <laughs> and, I thought, and I looked at that and I went, that's the same woman. I looked at the other testimonial they had on the site and then I went through the Fiverr and I went, that's him as well. <laughs> Well, that's right because the site Fiverr, and I have used that before for making my logo for actually for my website, and um, it it has got those sort of things there. You can yeah. hire someone to give you you know good reviews. You can hire someone to make you know a thousand likes, that sort of stuff. Yeah, and um, I mean the the sites these days are like you know the the Amazons and the the Googles and the and the Facebooks and all that. They're all coming to know about all these sort of things and they're starting to write software to determine what's right and what's not. Mm. Yeah, that's right. But I just thought, well, there'd be no, even if I had an inkling of buying something, if I saw a fake testimonial, out straight away, straight away. But anyway, uh, let's get on to uh, Netflix is going to disappear on older Samsung smart TVs. Uh, I guess it has to at some stage, doesn't it? Uh, what these TVs were all pretty much Android based. Is that right, Joe? Something like that? Yeah, a lot of them are, yep. Yeah, so I guess, as we all know, Android, the versions keep rolling on and uh, apps and that don't work with older versions. So from December the 1st, the Netflix app will no longer work on some 2010 and 2011 models due to technical limitations. Yeah, did they they mention what the technical limitations are? 
Oh, no, but it's probably just the operating system. Well, you know system. what? It's, it's, it, what I'm thinking is that some of these older TVs are running older processors in them. You know, like uh, today, you know, you can get a, a, a quad-core um, 2.3 uh, processor in your Android phone. Yep. Um, we're talking about old processors, maybe, you know, 2010, you'd look, what, dual-core? Mm. Um, if that, maybe. You might, what, <laughs> 512 uh, megabytes of RAM? Yeah. So so this is the technical limitations they're talking about. Yeah, so look, if you've got a, a flat-screen TV from 2010, I think you're doing pretty well to, anyway to start with. Uh, I think I think, well, I think two of mine are, so yeah, I'm still going all right. Uh, the Netflix can be watched on smart TVs. Uh, what's he say? Netflix can be watched on smart TVs, set-top boxes, streaming media players, and video consoles. Uh, there is a link in the show notes where you can apparently check your, device, your compatible device if it's compatible. <laughs> Uh, and also the other thing is uh, going to stop working for Netflix is ro- some Roku sticks. Uh, Roku said the older streaming stick models would no longer support Netflix, included the Roku, and there's a whole line yeah. of them. I, again, I think it's got to, got to do the same thing with the processor and the RAM that's in the in the, um, in the the actual older you know, You're probably right. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, it's like if you're still running an old um, wireless router at home, even though it seemed to be working fine and it's not dropping out or anything, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't go out and get yourself a dual core um, or a quad core uh, wireless router these days, because um, the speed and the uh, the memory within them uh, eventually is not going to keep up with all your devices mm. in your home. Because even our little uh, Chromecast, I guess at some stage, you know, the, the computing power inside those won't be sufficient to run whatever either. At some well, at yeah, some that's stage. right. I mean, the first version of the Chromecast is is been um, so, what do they call it, sunsetted now? They're not updating it anymore. They're just whatever's on it is whatever's on it. Right, right, okay. Yeah, so that's the very first version of the Chromecast. So that's uh, already happening now. That's already not getting updated anymore. Right. So right. if you've got one of those ones, it'll still work. It's not going to stop working. Mm. It'll still work, but it just won't update to the latest software. Right. And the other thing that Google's doing, apparently, is they're going to be offering personal bank accounts from sometime next year in partnership with Citigroup uh, and a small credit union at Stanford University. This is over in in uh, the US, but, I mean, you know, it starts off there and comes all, goes everywhere, doesn't it? So, look, they're, they're starting into the banking sector. Apparently, the project is named Cache. Don't you like how the Americans say Cache? Like a cache or something like that? Or Cache? Yeah, it's named Cache. Oh, that's why it's named Cache, because it's Cache. Right, I got it. But it's Cache. It's spelled Cache, as we know. Yeah, yep. um, it was first reported by the Wall Street Journal and follows follow moves by Apple and Facebook, who were also trying to get into the industry. Now, this guy Caesar Sengupta, the general manager and vice president of payments of Google, says our approach is going to be to partner deeply with the banks and financial system. It may be slightly a longer path, but it's more sustainable. Sustain, <laughs> sustainable. And I bet they get a lot more data out of it as well. So, uh, yes. Uh, look, I don't know. Uh, would you be happy to be banking with Google, Joe? Oh, look, I, I don't know. I've never given it any thought, but um, it's going to happen eventually. I think the idea what Google is trying to do there is they're trying to minimise the um, uh, the tapping system. Right. Uh, I think that's what they're trying to do away with. Right. Um, and, and sort of tapping your own card with your with with their card, which is built into the phone. I think that's where they're going with it. Mm. Yeah, well, I've been using my phone with the you know pay with the phone. That's been pretty good. I like it. You put all your cards in there. It's great. And uh, look, a couple more before we before we head off this week. Uh, just as a bit of a not really tech, but just as a passing interest, uh, postage prices on letters again is going to increase. Now I thought I'd ask myself. The question, and I thought I, I, I don't know, I didn't get it right before I read how much it was or what it's going to. But do you know, Joe, how much it is to post a letter? Now, yeah, at the moment, uh, uh, I think it's a dollar. You're right. 
I thought it was about 50 cents. Last yeah, time. no, it's about a dollar. You're um, right. And I think when it comes to Christmas time, it does have that special. I think it's either 50 cents or 80 cents at Christmas for special Christmas special. Yes, but, yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. It has gone. It's, they're, they're talking about it going up now. Yes, yeah, so it's going to go up to a dollar ten in January. This is, of course, if the government approves it. And why wouldn't they? It's more money for them. Uh, so the Australian Competition and Commu- Consumer Commission says Australia Post is not proposing to increase the price of priority labels, which are 50 cents. I don't know what they are. Concession stamps, 60 cents. don't know what they are. Or stamps for seasonal greeting cards, 65 cents. So, um, yeah, so all that's going up. And look, the last little bit this week, uh, besides just random stuff at the end, is James Dean is going to star in a new movie. And you go, hey, what? Didn't he die 50 years ago? That's what I thought too. <laughs> he did. So he's coming back to the big screen. Uh, he died in 1955 uh, in a car crash when he was only 24. So he's being brought back into a film called Finding Jack, and it's a Vietnam era drama. But he's being, but and he's being brought back thanks to CGI technology that uses actual footage of him. So now this guy. Uh, Anton Ernst, who's the director of the film, uh, told The Hollywood Reporter, we searched high and low for the perfect character to play the role of Rogan, which has some extreme complex character arcs. And after months of research, we decided on James Dean. So Finding Jack will be live action. Uh, It says that Dean's performance will be produced via full body CGI using actual footage and photographs of him. So isn't that exciting? Wow. That'd be pretty good. Oh, to- that's amazing! It sounds like the pretty much like the um, the ABBA holograms that they have there at the Apple, uh, ABBA Museum there in Swiss, in Sweden. Oh, well, I haven't seen those. Are they good? Can you yeah, see? apparently they're they're not having a concert um, anymore as as themselves, but mm. they are going to be going uh, having a concert. I think next year sometime, if I remember right. Right. Um, but the stage will be filled with holograms, and and apparently it's going to look just like them, and you're going to not know the difference, so this will be interesting. Yeah, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. Cool. Well, uh, I might have to. Go- I like Abba. I might have to get on there and have a look. See what that's all about. It, it might be like you know, the, the next that will be like you know the act or the singers or the band. They're just singing in their lounge room. And it's just like hologramly beamed onto a stage somewhere. Or well, no. As far as I as far as I know, um, from what I've been from what I read, and this was a while ago, um, they're just going to release like a hologram vision of them on stage and it looked like they're actually playing um on stage and singing on stage so yeah obviously they, they won't be singing themselves they'll mm. probably have some sort of background uh, music happening but yeah, I, I don't know I, I was i was like you i was excited when they were coming out i thought oh great i yeah. can get to see that ever well, but, well um well, it's I got ex- not the real them though no well i got excited just when they did the elvis on tour you know and he um they had his original band and they just had him up on the screen. That was good enough for me. I loved well, it. that's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Did they, is there have like a hologram of him? No, it was just a projection from old footage. So oh, the, okay. So they uh, just stripped the the band out of the footage and just had his voice uh, and the band played live. So he was still, you know, singing. He was still singing, but the band and the band was playing live. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I think I think that tour thing's still going around America, North America somewhere. But yeah, um, yeah. All right. Anything else this week, Joe? That you want to? Uh, no, I don't have anything else this week. Um, very slow week. It has been. It's, it's, it's got to do with a lot of sales happening. What is it? The uh, Black Friday, or is it what's it called? Yeah, it's something like that. Black Friday. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been getting emails about eleven eleven or something. Uh, oh, okay. Sales as right. sales. I'm not sure. Oh, is it? Every day is a sale. <laughs> These days, yeah. every day. But yeah. But all right. Well, let's. Uh, but let's leave it there. And, um, yeah, don't forget the Facebook. You can find us on the Facebook and YouTube. Uh, don't forget the uh, uh, the Aussie Tech Radio, which is a 24-7 Australian podcast. If you've got a podcast, uh, it's a tech podcast station. If you've got a tech-related, maybe even loosely tech-related podcast, I'll have a think about it. But let me know if you want me to put it up there. And, you know, why not? It's all about getting your, your podcast out there and heard. Look, it goes, oh, I haven't got the stats there off the top of my head, but um, I know it's been it's been growing and growing. It's, uh, 
the only stat that's in my head is is 50 gig a month that it, it pumps out around the world. So if you think your little uh, podcast might be 50 meg, well, 50 gig, that's pumping out a few podcasts there, a few uh, rounds. And also uh, thanks to uh, Will and Jace who are stepping in every second week. That's great. And uh, it's, good to, it's good to see those boys having fun. And, uh, yeah, so we'll uh, see you again soon. Thanks, Joe. No worries, Glenn. Thanks and for having me. Have a, have a good week. And uh, hopefully uh, no fires near you. Uh, not near me. They're about an hour away from me, mm. uh, but not right near me, no. Yeah. yeah I can c- certainly, see in, uh, certainly see the smoke coming past, and I can smell it um, every now and then when the wind blows this way. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll, look, the, the, this place here, the gold, has just been uh, just covered in smoke for the last week or something. Like, I'm not sure where the, the fires are, but uh, there was a, something on the radio I heard the other day that the Brisbane air quality has been worse than Beijing. So <laughs> that must be pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to the news this afternoon on my way back home, and there was a, a firefighter talking about a, a Melbourne-based company that uses some sort of special breathing apparatus Um to help um, stop fumes uh, entering your, your body because oh. apparently the normal apparatus that they use um, are not very good. Um, yep, sure, you have the the air ones, the air bottle ones, but, you know, that's so much uh, resources used there and you can't have a, mm. a bottle, you know, walk walk out and then come back and get another bottle, walk out, come and get another <laughs> bottle. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so look, um, thanks to all the fireys that are working hard out there. And uh, we, I'm sure everyone appreciates it. And if you get a knock on the door and told to get out, please get out. Don't hang around. Uh, all right. So that's us for this week. Thanks again, Joe. And we'll see you guys uh, soon. Next show. Or maybe next show. <laughs> all right. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.